Well, hey everyone, this is Craig here, and I'm joined by Susan, who most of you know, Susan Weeks, who Hi. is our technology and content uh, mentor, and she's also our technology instructor as well. And so today we are excited to, this is kind of the, you know how when stores will open up early, but then they don't actually have their release party or the official launch until like maybe a week after. So as you know, some of you are already diving into Susan's new uh, multimedia editing and production course. But today we're doing sort of what we want to call our version of a release party. Um, I don't even know if party is the term I'm using for, but just a release so you can uh, get to know uh, a bit more about the course, uh, why we created it, um, the purpose that it can serve for your business, um, the types of clients that you could work with uh, to offer these types of services and what the opportunities are for. You know, and Susan knows this, knows this well, that when we release courses at VA Classroom University, they're always with great intentionality. So um, the, we're always trying to answer the question, what, um, you know, what sort of skills or services uh, are clients looking for that they don't want to do themselves? That might actually take quite a bit of time, such as uh, finicky video editing or um, audio editing for a podcast. And that's uh, exactly what we've created in this multimedia editing and production course. Now, my disclaimer today is we've had major windstorms in my area. So as Susan said, I look like I'm underwater. Um, so that's giving you kind of a cool sort of graph visual effect today uh, that I wasn't intending. So uh, so anyways, I'm going to pass it over to Susan. And I just want to talk, Susan, a bit about, um, you know, why we created the course. And then we'll talk about what's what's involved in it and then go from there. So so why do you think, um, and and, you, and I should probably be able to answer this too, but why do you think this skill set is so important right now based on uh, your experience in doing this for quite some time? I think the main thing is, as more and more, you know, every, everybody's listening and taking account of the fact that you need to create more content, you need to do video, 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 podcast, audio, podcast, audio. And the thing about it is, yes, we've got the streaming tools, so we can people can kind of start to create video fairly easily. But because things need a different job, don't they? I think a, a video that's like this, that's been a Facebook Live, isn't always necessarily totally appropriate to share out in somewhere like LinkedIn, for example. So, yeah, you know, I think it's really nice to be able to take some of the fairly rough and ready video content that people can create easily. And, and, and make it better. And so as clients are listening to this message about video and audio, they then have that problem, don't they, of like, well, how do I do it? What do I do? I don't know. I don't know where to start. And I think that's where we can really start to add value to our, our client relationships. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And wouldn't you say, I mean, it's changed so much in the last 10 years, you know, since we started doing webinars. And I mean, the landscape is so much broader now. You've got uh, Facebook Live, which we talk about editing Facebook Live videos in the course. Um, podcasting was in vogue, you know, a number of years ago, and then it took a resurgence in the last three, four years. And so podcasting has become big. So now there's all these different opportunities for people to publish uh, via video and audio. But, you know, that, you know, it's good for them to publish the content, but then what do they do with it after? How do they repurpose it? How do they make it better? Um, how do they polish it? And that, and I know you know firsthand, Susan, that's where the nitty gritty work begins is is polishing, adding intros and doing all that, all that legwork, which most clients either don't have the skills or the time or even the desire to dive into that. Yeah, that, that that's right. And certainly as as I kind of mentioned, I think either the intro or the wrap up to the course, it it's a question of I've, I've offered that and I've, I've kind of grown my services, whereas people have said, oh, can you, can, 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 can you edit audio? Can you edit video? Uh, yes, you know, I, I, maybe at the start I couldn't, but <laughs> I'm a fast learner. But um, yeah, so I've always offered it as part of that overall package to my clients where they, you know, we've been doing, say, strategy on something and then they're going, yeah, but I've done these videos, but what do I do with them now? Okay, well, we can do this. And so then I've, you know, just it's just an, another skill that I've I've developed, and that clients have really valued in that they don't have to go and find somebody else to do that piece and somebody else to do that piece. It's it's really kept the whole when we've been looking at say 
video marketing. It's kept the skills in, in one place and they've enjoyed that and it's certainly something that I've you know, really enjoyed doing as well. So, yeah, we can add a lot of value. <clears throat> well, we can and it allows, and I think you've said this a bit and we talked about this in other courses, but it allows your content to travel a little bit further into other areas. So, for example, we do a Facebook Live like, we're doing today and we're probably making mistakes and messing up and we've got some technical issues today and windstorms. And so that's where someone like your, those that would take this course, they would come in and say, um, Craig doesn't, well, not that you could change how I look, but you could certainly do some polishing and editing to make this a better video if we're going to replay it on our blog or we're going to do some cool stuff and uh, re-upload it as a Facebook video or, or more, more importantly, a YouTube video. So we're going to try to move it into different platforms. So in order to do that, the video needs some work. And that's obviously where, you know, some of the things we talk about in the course. Yes, yes, it certainly does. Um, it, even things like improving the sound or improving, say, the, the lighting. You know, sometimes they come out quite dark. We could maybe improve the brightness, improve the color and tone. I don't know what we could do about the underwater effect, but um, <laughs> never mind about that. It's authentic. Um, yeah, put things like captions and subtitles and maybe some text. If somebody's explaining something, um, you know, a bit more complicated, we could put text up there and images, cut over to other bits of live video. There's, there is a lot that we can do. And certainly in terms of if we're going to share the video, then putting your URL into what we call a lower third, putting that on and putting an intro and an, an intro slide introducing what the thing is about. And then very importantly, having some kind of call to action or a last slide, at least where people know to sign, you know, to find out more, go here kind of thing. So all of those, you know, I've covered because I really wanted it to be, and you know, we've, we've talked about this practical. I really, really wanted it to be practical of the things that certainly over the years I've been faced with as a challenge. So you've all got the, my, my learning curve, curve over many years has been condensed down into a course for everybody. So uh, yeah, it, it was That's a course great. that I wish I had when I started. Well, that, yeah, me too. And I, I think, you know, one of the benefits that it brings to clients is that it helps it helps them look better. Like, you know, I, I, I think years ago, Susan, I was working on a really large project for a medical doctor. He was putting this sort of holistic treatment program online and we were building his course platform. He was creating the videos. And <clears throat> the problem was, is that he was very much a doctor. Um, no offense to anybody that has relatives, but he was a little dry. He was a little bit boring. And so we played back the videos and we had to do special cuts and we added some animations and we added a funky sort of musical inter intro. And by the end of it, I'm like, we've turned Dr. We'll call him Dr. T to protect his innocence. Uh, but we've turned him into sort of an online rock star, um, which he doesn't, you know, he very much wasn't. If you were in the actual live video room, which I was, um, this was going back many years ago. So it does help, you know, clients that are maybe putting average videos together uh, to make them a little more professional and, and, and add those enhancements. And even something like, like and what you talk about in the course, which is an intro and outro, even that somehow just raises the credibility uh, by just seeing this sort of musical intro. It's like, wow, these people have it together or there's some, there's some sort of professionalism uh, attached to this video. And, and you suddenly feel better about the person or there's, they're more credible. So That's right. I think there's just the element of polish. I mean, we don't want everything to be Hollywood productions. You know, that's the thing about, you know, Facebook Lives, for example. They are, you know, authentic and people like to engage with, with people. We don't want to go to that really ultra polished thing. I'm not ultra polished. I can't do ultra polished. But it does, adding those extra small pieces in just makes the video, it makes the, the person in the video, as you say, look better in terms of they just come across in a more polished manner, but also it's communicating your message better in terms of who are you, where can people find out about you, and make that video work harder as well for, for the client so that we can go and put it on LinkedIn or cut it down into little bits for the little Instagram stories and the little Instagram snippets. You know, there's, 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 there's those elements as well where we can then make that piece, that one piece of content, we can then make it into lots of other little bits of pieces as well. So again, the clients are not feeling 
overwhelmed by this, oh, I've got all this content to create. Well, actually, if you create some strategically thought out pieces, and then it can be edited and it's part of that repurposing thing that we've talked about before, then I think it really helps the client get to see some more value in that it's not just videos for vi videos sake, um, but it, it's, it's creating those extra pieces that can be distributed and work harder for just you know doing that five, 10 minute Facebook Live, for example. We keep coming back to them because it's relatively easy for someone to create a video for somebody to work with, but yeah, so. Mm. Yeah, great. I mean, I know we're belaboring repurposing because that's such an important strategy when you're working in content. Uh, but we have um, not to suggest another course for you because we're introducing this one, but a good sister course to uh, this new multimedia editing and production is our repur repurpose your online content course. Mm -hmm. um, because in, in that program, we talk about, you know, a number of years ago, I took a 10 step webinar sort of and I cut it up into 10 videos and I turned it into a 10 video email series uh, as a free giveaway. So, so the things we talk about in that course, you can actually do once you've taken the multimedia course, because it gives you sort of the, the technical skills to do that repurposing, which is. Yeah, which exactly. Is cool. And then so I think, go ahead. I was just going to say, and then, in, you know, the same kind of rationale behind the audio editing as well, you know, people are focused on, on podcasting, but, People can also do, you know, again, for the client, it's easier to record some audio. They can even do it on the little, you know, on the phone or whatever. And then again, that can be repurposed into something that's sent out via email or it's put on a, a built a blog post around it or whatever. So, you know, both skills are, I think, very integral these days to just adding that usefulness to your clients and helping them to spread their word out and get their message out in, in, in a more vari va varied and powerful way. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Well, let's talk about clients for a minute because it really, there is a wide gamut of clients that you could target with these types of services. Why don't we talk, maybe give us some ideas of, and I, and I know you've worked with a plethora of very interesting and diverse clients and, and you've shared that in the past, but what to, sort of general groups do you think would latch on to someone that has these skills? I mean, I think the, the standout one is, is usually coaches, isn't it? Coaches and speakers, um, because they're getting much more into doing videos. So they're kind of feeling a bit more confident about that side of things. But um, I, I say I've, I've had all sorts of people. I, I seem to have finished it with quite a lot of um, kind of medical related. It's funny you're mentioning a, a doctor there, you know, trying to polish polish him up yeah so um doctors and, and medical professionals they are more um embracing video and audio as well at the moment so that's you know and say i've over the years worked with all sorts of, of medical related people strangely enough so but yeah i think coaches are the the kind of instant thing and i think we're also seeing a lot more authors getting involved in terms of audio for things like audio books etc but also in video in that authors now can't just hide behind their pages and their pen and the paper can they they're, they're out there promoting their book and and you know writing a book is 10 percent of the effort and then you know 90 percent of it's now marketing and, and and building your crowd and all the rest of it so i think they would be a, it fits i think very well does although somebody's focused on writing that getting them to create content and be able to take their words and them and, and again expand their words, their writing in a, in a different way. So they're, you know, that's probably three standout people at the moment. But <clears throat> That's great. And I think you could also target those that are using different mediums. So for example, if you know of whether they're authors or speakers or info marketers and you know that they do a regular Facebook live show every week, you might connect with them and say, hey, do you need someone to kind of Post, do post production work for your Facebook so we can get your uh, Facebook live and other other mediums and other platforms. So that that's an, a whole audience. And then, the, as you know very well, Susan, the whole podcasting networks, where you've got podcasters that may have some skills and some audio engineering skills that they've been using, but they're getting busy and they'd love to sort of pass that off to somebody else to take care of that production work. So, yeah. so there's a no, there's no shortage of new and existing podcasters that you might uh, be able to reach out to as well. Yes, exactly. It is, it's, it's both sides, isn't it? I think it's, there's just such a massive scope there for 
helping people. Yeah. So let's talk about the course. Uh, you know, obviously it's it's meaty. We got lots of sort of practical skills that we're teaching across both audio editing and and video editing and some other things. So just share. You, you don't have to go through every module, but just give us sort of a an overview of what to expect, what people expect. Yeah, well, I've split it into audio and video, and I started off with the audio for the main reason being that um, we, we've, we've chosen Audacity, which is very powerful but free audio editing software, and that's working on what we call a timeline. So as time passes along, you can see the sound waves moving in and out, and video editing is also based on a timeline. So I thought, start with the audio. And, and I've basically gone through a bit of information about getting yourself prepared and organized, a tour of each of the software um, pieces, software thingies. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> software, <Fantasia>. software. <laughs> um, so a tour, a tour around those and then basically gone through, starting off with some basic editing, like cut, like you were doing a word processing document, you know, add, copy, insert, delete, move. They're all the same kind of things that we do with audio. And then we would extend to video, which is more complicated because you've got the visual aspect as well. Um, but I've, I've kept it quite specific to typical sorts of things that clients have asked for. And as I keep saying, we're not trying to get a job with the, you know, the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. We're not Hollywood pro producers here. This is skills very much targeted at our typical kind of clients that we've talked about. Um, I've also added bits in some kind of hints and tips about thinking around when we start to work with multiple tracks that has challenges as well. So I've thrown a few. There's been some learning curves going in there over the years with, with multiple tracks, I can tell you. Um, and, and then again, the same with video, the kind of tour around the, the software, what all the different parts are. Because I think that's that's one thing, Craig, that certainly when I've looked at different audio and video editing software is you, you load it up, and certainly with video, you're just faced with this like, ah, oh, there's stuff everywhere. Yes. There's stuff here and there's stuff there and there's this little button there and what does this do? And, oh. Whereas I've, I've tried to kind of break it down into the areas. This area does this, this area does that. and you know, kind of explain that first of all, so you get feel less overwhelmed by the different bits and pieces. And with all of this software, there's loads of things you can do. But again, I've kept it down to the, the, the things that are more useful. And once you've got an idea, then you can start to extend your skills if you need to. But quite honestly, there's there's nothing there's nothing that I have done that isn't in that course. If, just if that makes sense. Yeah, and if, if we just talk about video for a second, because that's such a, a big service you can offer. Um, yeah, you could get into a program that's fairly sophisticated, like an Adobe Premiere, uh, mm -hmm. which is will bring you to tears if you start to look at the sort of the interface and all of the nitty, all the little things that you could do with it. But uh, we we chose Camtasia because a it's it's one of the most I would say affordable, and widely used tools. Uh, they uh, they constantly are updating it, and it's. It may not have every bell and whistle that Adobe Premiere has, but it does everything that you would need to polish and produce the kind of videos that your clients are creating that aren't for the BBC, but they're just high quality videos for their YouTube channel or for their blog or for their website or for their Facebook page or wherever it might be. Um, so, so yeah, so Camtasia is the one we're going with. And I think there's a 30 day trial, isn't it? Yes, there is. Yeah. 30 day trial, which I, th I think is, it's, it's a nice duration. You know, some of these things, they give you a week. That's really no use at all, is it? I hate those week's traps because by the time I remember I'm supposed to be doing my week's trap, oh, oh it's gone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the 30-day trial, I think, would give you enough time to kind of crack on, block some time out in your diary, think, right, I've got this 30-day trial. I'm going to go through the class. Uh, I'm going to do some practicing to give you a good idea of, like, is this for you or not? Because you may think it's going to be for you or you may think you'll hate it. And until you've actually tried it and give it a go, you, you don't know it's like anything else, isn't it? So, yeah, the 30-day the free trial I thought was really nice with Camtasia. And Audacity, of course, is free, um, although, it, again, it's, it's very powerful. Mm. There's so many things you can do in, in, in Audacity that, you know, it, in terms of things like music mixing. I, mm. I haven't done any, anything like that. But, uh, yeah, in terms of editing spoken word audio, um, so, but that's that's free as well. So a nice a nice package. And I think they're both 
both nice to use, I, I find. Yeah. And if you do get to a place where you're saying, hey, I want to offer this as a service, then you're looking at around the, and it varies depending on what country you're in, in terms of the exchange, but it would be, you know, in the US market, about $200, uh, just under $200 for a Camtasia for the PC. Um, and uh, and I'm a Mac person, so I use ScreenFlow, which is, a, you know, a, a comparable tool as well. And that's more running around $100 um, as well. So, so pretty affordable, but you don't have to worry about that during the course. Just take the free trial and, uh, and, and get, get comfortable. Typically, you know, the question might be, will you add this to the sandbox? Well, we can't really add it to the sandbox because this software is specific to your, um, you know, your computer or your laptop. Um, it's not, uh, in other words, it's not a web-based application. If it was web-based where we could just log in, then for sure we would add it to our sandbox. So that's, that's why we're taking advantage of the 30 day trial. And then of course the free audacity platform, um, yeah. which is pretty robust for that sort of open source tool that they've had for, for many yeah, years. Very, very much so. And yeah, it's got good, good levels of help. And the thing I would say is say I've used other editing, uh, video editing software and once, once you've got the idea of what timeline editing is like, they're all kind of similar. It's just the fact that the way in which Camtasia does it, I think is particularly nice in the fact that you've got the, the tools on the left-hand side and they're all kind of drag and drop onto the timeline and then you can see the properties on the right-hand side. And that's really nice. So it's once you've kind of got the idea of, where you put them and yes, go and look at the properties and fiddle around with the various sliders and controls, then you can kind of extend that to, to anything. Then it's really your, your imagination. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do keep just kind of going on about is something nothing to do with software at all. It's developing your listening and your looking skills. Mm -hmm. So you can start to listen. Well, if I change that a bit, does it actually sound better or does it sound worse? Does it actually look better or does it look worse? And so those are <clears throat> practice skills, really, nothing to do with the software. It's, it's, it's how you're starting to get a feel for what you change and how it starts to appear, mm. if that makes sense. Or is that, am I just mad? I don't know. No, that's that's how total, I total sense. So in summary, when we look at this course, um, and, and again, it kind of fits our mission, is that we want to create skill-based training programs that will increase income and opportunities for you. If you were to look at virtual assistants, whether you call yourself that or not, or a freelancer, um, and the number of people that have, let's say, are good with using office applications. They could do desktop publishing, they could do a PowerPoint presentation, they could do an Excel spreadsheet. It's like wide and vast. There's a lot of people that have that skill set. But then you start to take these specialized skills like audio engineering, we'll call it, or video production, and it goes like this where it, I, I'm not saying there's nobody doing it, but it narrows the field of people that you're competing against for services. And so suddenly you now uh, have this additional sort of uh, golden nugget, if you wanna call it, this, this skill set that you can employ if you're working with coaches and authors and speakers and they have a video and you're like, hey, I can, I could just whip that up for you and pop an intro and, and uh, get that ready to publish on your blog. And they're like, really? Okay, that's cool. Uh, and so what it does is it just makes you, it keeps you on the cutting edge. This course very much is on the cutting edge, especially since we've included topics like Facebook Live, um, because we know that's so relevant. Uh, and people, they love the authenticity of a Facebook Live video with their, maybe while the audience is live and you're messing up. But when you're going to watch it on a replay, it'd sure be nice to try to polish it, maybe add an intro and turn it into something that's maybe the quality goes up like this. Yeah. That is the type of work that you will be able to do once you uh, complete this course. And the last thing I'll say, Susan, and get your thoughts on it is the final module is on building your audio and video editing service. Maybe unpack that a little bit because that's, I, I know that's the big question you all have. Once you learn the skills, you're like, okay, well, how do I actually build <laughs> into something that I can make money from or I can offer my, my clients? So, what, what what's happening in that final module? Yeah, so I, I looked at it from it's that it's that good old question of packaging. And to be quite honest, to start off with, then yes, it, it's very difficult. Audio and, and video editing can be difficult to work to know in advance how long it's going to take. Um, and certainly when you're kind of learning the skills as well. So 
there is a, a you know reasonably good argument for saying start off with some kind of just you know, just an, an hourly kind of rate um but it's like a lot of these other skills there's always somebody in fiverr isn't there we're wanting to you know it'll, it'll do all this work for kind of pretty much nothing so you, you also want to avoid being kind of just a commodity and include it in different value-based things and so so one thing i was looking at was try and once you've got to so start off with hourly just so you can get an idea of how long things are going to take and you know it, it, it while you're learning it will take longer and so you don't want to be charging necessarily i probably shouldn't say this but you know say if something took you five hours and really it should have taken you three because you've been learning then I wouldn't feel competent charging somebody five hours because they haven't really had five hours worth of work, have they? So it's very much a kind of a juggling act at the start. But I think I like to put something like that within the context of making it a value-based package. So the offer to the client is, well, I will take your Facebook Live and out will pop a video with the URLs in the call to action, some music. I've taken the fluffs out. I've increased, you know, I've improved the audio. I've improved the video. So I think that is far more. It's it's a thing that you can sell, and I think clients are more happy to engage on that basis rather than this seemingly open ended. Well, it's going to be fifty dollars an hour or, or whatever, but it's not really telling them what it's actually going to be, is it? So it it, it can be difficult. So I think whilst you're learning, then go by the hourly thing but one of the way that I thought was quite a good way of pricing is looking at the duration of the thing that you're editing so for example if it's a five minute Facebook live or a 25 minute Facebook live then it's going to take five times longer or four times longer so you might want to come up with some kind of package whereby up to say five minutes would be X amount of dollars and then every five minutes would be an increment on top of that because obviously the duration is very important when we're looking at something like this because you are editing on on a timeline so I thought that would be a it's a different way that we we'll, we'll haven't probably come across in, in other packages it's not relevant but I think for the video and the audio I think that is something that can be a worthwhile way of doing it as well so I say I try and as quickly as you can build up that experience and then move into offering a package for a specific thing or it may be that you would take a you know webinar people do webinars like like you do through zoom for example that might be another thing they can be an hour long but you want all the stuff at the start taken away don't you know we're not quite ready and all that all that needs to go um so that we can then focus on the the content of the webinar and then, you know, putting, linking it with a shopping cart, you know, you can do the evergreen webinars, for example, that would be another specific deliverable. So that's where I think ultimately you, you, you start to not only offer good value and an outcome for your clients, but you start to make it easier for yourself in that you've got a thing or a set of things to sell rather than I just edit audio and I am X amount per amount of time because then you're a commodity and we want to be developing ourselves into that kind of ex expert thing as we've been talking about you're offering your services in a different way so that's that's how i think about it so mm -hmm. probably everyone will be throwing stones no, and doubts no. at me now. <laughs> no that's excellent oh, i think i'm hearing myself are you hearing me twice Susan? Um, no, no, you're still okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm only getting that benefit over here. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> well, that's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, see, that would be something to edit out if, if, if you were actually hearing that. But so the, the cool thing about this service is, it is as you get, ma as you gain mastery over these skills, as Susan's saying, you may start out at a certain package or even hourly, as she said, and then back into a package. But the faster you get, the more, the, the more skilled you get. Obviously, that just you end up earning more per minute or per hour. You're just you're just backing into you're able to get projects done quicker. That's moving up your average hourly rate and you're able to book more clients. And suddenly it's becoming a much more lucrative service than when you were just trying to figure things out. And they were taking you 100 hours or too many hours that 
you, but we, you don't we've even all, want we've to. There, haven't we? We've all spent too damn long. Yeah, you don't even want to calculate what the hourly rate would be because you would be, you know, utterly depressed. But that's where the learning curve. And we hope that by you taking the course, spending 30 days practicing uh, as much as you can using the free trial, purchase it if you decide to, if that is an area that you want to move into. And then, of course, being able to access Audacity. Um, again, the big thing here is, is taking what you're learning from Susan's modules and practicing and practicing and practicing because uh, the more you, the better you get, uh, the faster you'll be and, and the better kind of service, the more profitable service that you can offer. So, yeah. and so was, thank you, no, thank you Susan. But any final okay. remarks? Oh, I was just going to say one other thing that I, I, it, it, I think it's really important is that whilst you're doing this, is that you're developing a process. So, for example, when I've actually been doing the uh, the modules for the course, I've, I've kind of oh, I'm Mrs. Plan and Spreadsheet Woman, aren't I? So I, I can't but help create a little tick list for myself. But seriously, you, once you start doing something, you need to keep that process going. And by the process, I mean, say, so, right, I'm going to load this in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'll put the cursor effect on, or I'll zoom it in, and then the next thing I'll do is I'll apply the audio improvements. And then I'll cut these bits off and things like that and and then make sure when you're adjusting say the brightness and the color and things write them down right that's minus 20 that's 15 and that's 62 because the next video that you do it, it might be two hours time or it might be tomorrow you forgot and so then they're all slightly different you have somebody might give you a series to do so develop that process and again in terms of value for the clients and just getting that experience and, and developing that kind of expert thing is your process is also very attractive. You can say, look, I've, you know, I've got this process and this is, I've got a process for doing a Facebook Live, I've got a process for doing a webinar and, and it's replicable and I've done it lots of times. Again, that adds to the kind of confidence level of your clients that they're speaking with somebody who is not just making this up as they're going along. You know, it's something that we have kind of applied. So, um, yeah, you, you, you can't take the old computer programmer out of the girl, I'm afraid. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's skills that is really important. And I think it being able to kind of sell the process as well as the value just really enhances your skills yet again. And, and that's that's where we need to go. Uh, well, that's what I think. Anyway, so. Yeah, and, and the course is going to help you with that. I mean, in terms of you talk about... <laughs> Sort of building workflows into the yeah. different types of work you do where you've got this step by step um, whether you're onboarding a client or whether you're bringing them into a service like this um, you know this yeah definitely this course will help as well well thanks susan for uh, tuning in late uh on <laughs> your neck of the woods and uh this is an official sort of uh grand opening for this new course i hope that you all enjoy it please uh Post your questions in the community. If there's things that you're wondering about or you're you're working on a sort of project or one of the assignments or activities and you're struggling, post your question. We're here, Susan's here, um, and uh, I know there's others in the group that have video and audio editing experience. So uh, please bring out all the questions that you have and I uh, hope that you enjoy this brand new course that we are offering to all of you. So thanks, Susan. Uh, enjoy the rest of your, your evening and uh, we'll see you all soon. Yes, thank you, Craig, and good luck, everybody. And I'm there to answer your questions. So, yeah. Excellent. Okay, take right. care. Yes. Okay. Bye.